Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here this morning as we continue our Easter celebration. And after today, the tone changes just a little bit as we talk about we passed that 40th day mark when Jesus ascends into the heavens. So this is kind of the end of Easter, but not really, but almost. And I do want to say thank you to God for the change in the weather. Oh my gosh, on Wednesday or Thursday, yeah, Wednesday and Thursday, and even Friday, when it almost, you know, Thursday was almost 100 degrees, I was ready to just crawl into a hole and wait for December. It was horrible. Uh, so i wake it up on a day like this, absolutely gorgeous. I'm just so happy that the weather has changed to something spring-like instead of August. So as we do gather today for our celebration of Mass, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. The lesson for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the New Testament book of the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed, and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Alleluia. And you will receive it in the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. 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 Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, and mighty God, you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. And Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, which the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows it, but you know it because it remains with you, and it will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord.
they grew out, moved on, and now we're full of kids all over again. And I think this is why those cars are starting to slow down on Fair Street because of that big sign just down the road that tells you how fast you're driving. Now, the speed limit hasn't changed. I'm sure the speedometers are working just fine in the cars, but that big sign with those big letters saying Deerfield Police Department puts a fear of a ticket in your head. And then people slow down. It's a reminder. It's a warning. Well, at least the people in the cars slow down. The other night after choir rehearsal, Cher and I were on our walk with our dog. We're coming up Fair Street from the Main Street side, and we see a couple of boys, maybe a little bit shy of being teenagers, and they're riding their bikes really fast down the road towards us, and then they turn around and they start heading the other way. So I'm a little bit old. It takes me a long time to walk down Fair Street. So now we're continuing to walk this way, and again, those two boys racing down the road on their bikes, and this time we're close enough to hear them talking. And they're bragging to each other about how fast they're going, that that big electronic sign down the road was saying that they went 31 miles an hour, which is six miles above the posted speed limit. <laughs> now you drive a car, you see that sign, you probably slow down, wondering if maybe just down the road there's a cruiser parked, you don't want to get the ticket, you take it as a warning. You're a young boy, you've got tons of energy, it's a hot May night and you've got a bike, you see that sign and instead you go as fast as you possibly can. You take that sign as a challenge. The difference is how you look at the situation. The same sign, the same laws, the same street, the same amount of kids, two completely different perspectives. Now let's look at this morning's gospel, in particular just the very first sentence. There are actually two distinct translations that are offered in my Bible, and if you want, you can go home and check yours and see if it's the same there too. Now, the way that I read it this morning is Jesus saying, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's a statement of fact. It's Jesus saying to us that if we love him, then because of our love for him, that we will instinctively, naturally keep his commandments. One flows from one to the other naturally. It's almost like commandments is too strong a word. And the second translation, though, the one that I didn't read, is different by only the subtraction of a couple of words, but makes a huge difference. In that second translation, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that sentence is in the imperative tense. It's a commandment. The statement is still based on our love of Christ, but there's something with force to those words. It's like, keep my commandments, or else there's like an exclamation point there. The first one kind of flows. If you love me, then of course you're going to do what I ask. The second one is, if you love me, then prove it. Now again, just like that sign on, Tra on Thayer Street, it's about how we approach it. Is our faith like something that has to be imposed upon us with warnings, or can we accept it as a challenge that we embrace to even be faster and better at Christianity? Is our Christianity like we're driving the car down Thayer Street and we see that large sign over there blinking tells us that we're going above the speed limit so that we kind of are afraid and we slow down? Or is Christianity like those two kids on their bikes yelling to each other about how excited they are that they broke the speed limit? I think we all recognize that churches are hurting, especially here in New England. We are the least religious section of the entire country according to Pew Research. Churches are merging because of this. Churches are closing because of this. And right here, all of us here know that our attendance was, it isn't what it was even a couple of years ago. And I obviously don't have an answer to this trend to turn it around because if I did, then there would be so many people here we'd have to have ushers trying to have people find a seat here. And I don't think any of us had a problem finding a seat this morning. But I think today's readings, there is a clue where we can at least start looking for an answer to hopefully try to turn that around here at Holy Name, here in these communities, here in New England. You know, Camille read for us in the Acts of the Apostles. We're hearing stories of the earliest days of Christianity. The church was small, real small. They met in houses. Numbers did not matter. The church, though, was growing, and the church was extremely enthusiastic. And enthusiasm in the Bible has that sense of um, in God, of the Spirit inspiring you. 
So last week, we were introduced to the first seven deacons in the Jerusalem church. And you may remember their names because poor Mariana had to try to read them all, and they're difficult names. But that's when we heard that they were also being called into this ministry to free up the 12 apostles so they could preach the word while the deacons took on the more mundane task of trying to feed the hungry. But today we hear that one of those deacons is preaching in the city of Samaria, and that sounded just like the definition of an apostle, but he's only a deacon. So we can tell that these titles and descriptions, that they're so early that they're going through a period of definition and redefinition. The church is more open to the Holy Spirit than to rules set in cement. Church wasn't about laws. Church was about excitement. Church was about the spirit. It wasn't what you had to do. Church was about the fun of trying to go and be as fast as you could. Inspired by the spirit, the deacon Philip is preaching Christianity for the first time in the city of Samaria. And the Bible tells us that the people weren't there because they had to be. The people weren't there because they were scared. The Bible today, as Camille said, so there was great joy in that city. There was joy from the message of Christianity. If we could get that message of joy out there again, somehow there would be more people. People go to breakfast on Sundays because there's joy in doing that. People go out on weekends and they, they travel because there's joy in doing that. People go to sporting events on Sunday because there's joy in doing that. Why isn't there joy in church? I have joy in church. I've been wanting to be a priest since I was eight years old. I love coming to church. But what is it about church that sucks the joy out of this? Why is it that people come here and they just can't come back to the next Sunday? I don't understand, and I wish I did, because there should be more people here, because Christianity is not something scary. Christianity is not something you have to do. Christianity, according to the Bible, is joy. So all of those people that you know that aren't here, ask them, why aren't they here? And if there's something that they would rather do than be here, ask them what we can do to bring joy back into this place and into this worship. It's what we have to do as Christians, not just to fill the seeds, because this is what we need to do as Christians. Jesus says that if we love him, everything else will fall into place naturally. Philip preaches about Jesus in Samaria, and the people, as I said, were filled with joy because of that message. Somehow church needs to tap into that trust of her people again, that if we love Christ, then our consciences will guide us. We need less rules and more enthusiasm. And we need to somehow again foster that sense of joy when we worship. The fear of tickets will keep a lot of people now from speeding down their street, but our relationship with Jesus should be more like those excited kids on their bikes trying to go as darn fast as they possibly can. Our faith should be an exciting challenge that here is where we meet with God. And that's not something you have to do out of fear. That is something that we have to do because we love it. It's all about how we approach our faith. And maybe if we can be more like those kids on their bikes on a hot May evening, then maybe, just maybe, maybe churches can grow all over again. And for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather before your altar on one of these last Sundays of our Easter season, we offer our prayers for, um, uh, I'm sorry, Admiro Santos, who is hospitalized, and prayers are offered for his speedy recovery. And this is offered by Bobby Santos, Linda Bahalski, and Debbie Bushashek. We also offer our prayers for Mary Durkee, who is currently at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. We pray for continued health and recovery. And this is being offered by her friends and family here at Holy Name. We also continue to offer our prayers for Jenny DeVera as she continues to recover, uh, recover from a recent operation. We also continue to offer our prayers for Liz Bridgman, battling cancer and raising three young girls on her own. Alex, a 16-year-old with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease, and Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, all offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer our prayers for Frank Skrosky, who's offered by the Skrosky, Gates, and Kirkendall families. 
And I continue to offer prayers for Bishop Thomas Canott's health and also for the well-being of his wife Catherine, who is caring for her. We also offer prayers for those battling cancer, Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Strosky. Maurice Lazell is offered by myself. Richard Poe is offered by the Poe and Foster families. Two-year-old Jack Soleil is offered by Marianna Foster. We also continue to offer our prayers for Thanksgiving for Frank Marchand's a wonderful um, diagnosis that he is cancer-free at present. And I'd also like to offer one other special private prayer for a dear friend of mine um, in special needs of God's grace. Are there any other prayers that the congregation would like to offer at this time? Um, I'd also like to share with you that I did talk to uh, Catherine Gannat yesterday, Ms. Uh, Bishop Gannat's wife, and uh, the bishop is in a nursing home, and he's on a feeding tube um, at present, and uh, so we did have a nice conversation. He's basically bedridden. Um, they are hoping to uh, get him a little bit more mobile. I guess that feeding tube gives him a little bit more uh, strength and energy, and maybe that'll turn around and uh, help him to get out of bed. I do have a wedding down in uh, Scranton in July, and I, and I told him that I would uh, love to stop by and see him at that time, and so I hope to see him in a couple months' time, but please keep, uh, you know, the, the bishop before our current bishop, uh, Bishop Gannat, in your private prayers during the week as well. For all these intentions, Lord, plus the private ones that we bring before you now, we also ask you, Lord, to bless each and every one of us here gathered, and to bless those who are parish who are unable to be with us here today, and those who are parish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism to the forgiveness of sins. I live in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. Alleluia. We receive from your most sacred hands, most gracious Father, the sacramental bread, the same faith and trust, the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior. For the sent to them, I myself will be bread and down from us. If any eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh, and the life of the bread. Lord God, you do this great dignity and worthiness. For Jesus Christ, who is all over you, the same bread.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Merciful Father, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts as a sure pledge of your heavenly kingdom now amongst us. May this same Spirit bear witness within us that as, you, that as we are your children, that we are also heirs of your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Father will love him, we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. 
I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriest in prayer, and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed you, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful Lord, we your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life. And to those who are in life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine Master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, Jesus Christ our Lord, amen, by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence.
Lord from all of us, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, <clears throat> who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be pardoned from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awakened a living faith, fervent love, Worship, adoration, and all holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing ser a servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word. And I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. High praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of 
body and the blood of Christ. The 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 body and the blood of Christ.
He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have already told you. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, grant us the spirit of truth that we who have received your word and also received you in the Holy Eucharist, that we may know that you are within us and that we are all in you. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifices are offered. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the word became flesh. And made his dwelling among us, we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. <laughs> 